What's going on everybody? So today I want to make a video on my refugium. I want to discuss reasons why I think you should have a refugium, reasons why I have a refugium, and how I built my refugium. So basically my refugium is a budget build. It's very cheap to make, um, relatively cheap to make. Um, it also is more lean towards an all-in-one tank. So the setup I have has a back chamber and I don't have a sump. So I have to build the refugium within the back chamber of my all-in-one tank. You could use this setup in a sump system. Obviously you just have to modify a few things. And also this build is more for a nano tank. But if you do have like a larger tank, let's say up to above 60 gallons, you just have to beef up, beef up this refugium just a little bit. Um, but let's get started on reasons why you should have refugium. So basically there are about three main reasons why you should have a refugium. First being nitrate control, second being phosphate control, and the third being a, a housing breeding area for your isopods and copepods. So the first two kind of go hand in hand. Um, so it lowers, having a refugium lowers your nitrates and phosph phosphates. Uh, how it does this is basically a refugium is a spot outside your main display where you can grow microalgae using usually a red light or any type of light to grow that microalgae. So a light other than your main display light. Um, so when that microalgae grows in this confined area, it uh, eats your nitrates and phosphates within your tank. So in return, that lowers your nitrates and phosphates, making it um, easier for you to control those two things because you have this microalgae eating it and also helps you space out your water changes. So having refugium is awesome uh, for, the, for those reasons right there. Um, the main reason I love it is I can space out my water changes a little bit. So I only have to do a water change about every three weeks. And I think that's large to do because of the refugium. Um, it just consumes a lot of nitrates and phosphates in my tank. I, I feed heavy, I feed all my corals and my chato grows like crazy. So I know it's doing its job. And my nitrates and phosphates do stay relatively low for how much I feed. Um, and the last reason is going to be the isopods and copepods breeding area. So within your refugium, once you have some isopods and copepods within your tank, they're going to make their way to that refugium. One way or the other, they're going to get there. Uh, it is the perfect place for your isopods and copepods to breed and to live. So the reason why they, they live there, first off, it's safe. So there is no predators within your uh, refugium. Um, they can live amongst that chato or whatever microalgae you have in there. Uh, so it's a safe haven for them. And, they, and within that safe haven, they breed. So they reproduce within the, the chato. In my example, I'm using chato. Um, and then they also eat um, all the algae that's grown inside the refugium. So there will be film algae, um, microalgae grown on top of the chato, and those isopods and copepods will eat those. So in return, they'll breed, and then more isopods and copepods will make their way into the main display, and the isopods and copepods will feed your fish. So your fish will eat them, like my six line wrasse picks off the isopods. I'll come in here at night and I'll see him uh, hunting those isopods. And so it, it feeds the fish and it also, also those isopods and copepods, they will eat the film algae on your glass. They'll eat hair algae. So they're very good algae control. I think they're one of the best. I think they're very underrated. So having those isopods and copepods are very beneficial to your tank. And that is all thanks to having a refugium. I think without the refugium, you won't have as much success with isopods and copepods. So having a refugium, especially for if you have a mandarin, is a must. I think you must have a refugium to have a mandarin unless you're dosing your tank with isopods and copepods. So you can see having a refugium has many benefits. It's not just nitrate and phosphate control. It's just beneficial for your tank in general. So let's get to how I created my budget refugium. So I have an all-in-one 25 gallon lagoon tank. Here it is. All my corals in here. They're doing great. That one looks a little rough. Uh, <laughs> I had a fish pick on that one. So that's why it's up here. 
So let's make our way back to the refugium. So right now it's on. Um, right now my tank, it was off. I turned the lights back on about 30 minutes ago. So the corals might look a little closed up. Um, they're usually, the A cans are usually a little bit bigger than that. And then some of my zoas are closed up over there. But I had to do it at night because that's when my refugium lights up. I know I could have turned on my refugium, but it's the way I did it. So here it is. So basically uh, the way I set it up is on the back, we'll start with my light. So on the back of my all-in-one tank, um, I have a light. Now this light is Velcro, double strip si or double sided Velcro um, to the back of my tank. And on the back of these tanks, they are black, but it's more like a sticker on the back. So you can take a razor blade and cut a hole um, so it's just bare glass showing. I have another tank out in the garage that I will pause this video and show you that real quick. All right, so we're out here looking at this other tank. So this tank is an innovative marine 10 gallon and the tank in there is a 25 gallon lagoon tank by innovative marine. So it's the same manufacturer that makes this tank as the other one. So it's exactly the same built exactly the same. Just the one in there is a bit bigger. So you can see back here is a back is a black background and um, it's basically this sticker adhesive material so what you can do is you can get an exacto blade or a knife whatever something sharp to cut this and you can just take it along cut it however big you need it so the size of your light and then you can just peel it off and now you have a uh, bare glass on the back. So it's very easy to cut that off. Um, it takes minimal effort. It's not a big deal at all. You're not gonna see it on the back of your tank. So um, I love the way they did that. I'm so glad it's not a paint. It's this adhesive sticker material that they used. So back to the refugium. All right, so as you saw out there, how to cut off that background, um, I grabbed a flashlight so you could see um, the light up against the glass. So it is just stuck up against the glass with that Velcro strip. Now the light I'm using is a Chato Max by Innovative Marine. They have two different sizes. They have a 9 watt, which is a single strip, or they have an 18 watt, which is basically two of these lights that are put together. So it's two strips. Um, I find in my 25 Lagoon that this 9 watt is more than enough. I grow Chato like crazy. I have to pull out Chato because it's growing through the top just about once a month, once every three weeks. So pretty much a water change. I'll have to take off a chunk off the top. Um, so this 9 watt does just fine. Again, this is a Chato Max by Innovative Marine. Awesome light. I would highly recommend. Um, I got this one on sale during the holidays. I think usually they're around 70 bucks or so, but they run deals on these all the time. Um, I got this from Bulk Resupply, and they're also on Innovative Marine's website. So take a look at there, and um, it's a great light. So next, let's move to the caddy that I used. So within this all-in-one tank, it has these back chambers and in one of the chambers I just used one of these caddies that I already had on hand and put Chato in there. So you can see I have a lot of sponge algae or sponge on the back of this glass here. Um, I just need to wipe that off every so often. But uh, what I did is I used one of these caddies. It's got a shelf right there. I put it on the lowest shelf as possible. I, I kept a little space so water could flow in between there very easily. And also the light stops uh, about the end of the Chato. So, um, yeah. So I used one of these Innovative Marine caddies. So this is, caddy is by Innovative Marine. Um, I just modified it to put Chato in here. Threw some Chato in here. Threw it in this back chamber. And that's all my refugium is. Uh, if I didn't have this Innovative Marine Caddy on hand already, I could have built one using Egg Crate, but I really like the ease of the Innovative Marine. I do think it's worth the extra money to buy one of these, but if you're trying to do a budget build, just go ahead and use an Egg Crate. Um, you can look up those on YouTube, Egg Crate Caddies. 
very easy to make. You just buy some egg crate from Walmart. You cut it into a square. You zip tie them together uh, into form this caddy shape, and you just stuff Cheeto in the top. Very easy, very cheap to make. So this is all my refugium is, um, and isopods and copepods love this thing. So that just sinks back in that hole. Um, I have plenty of flow because I have my pump uh, in this next chamber right here. So it's pulling, you can kind of see where it's pulling the water. So it's going down through there and pulling out through the bottom and a little bit from the top. The majority of the water is getting pulled from the bottom there. So water is being flown through there. Now having flow is an important part to having um, a refugium. You do want adequate flow. The chato will grow a lot better with flow. It'll also not have as much as that film algae within the chato. If you have a lot of other algaes that are growing on the chato, it will smother it out a little bit. So it's a very good idea to have some good flow. Now, I run my light for 12 hours. I run it at night. Uh, the lights are only on for video purposes. But when my lights go off, my refugium comes on. A lot of people run run it 24 seven. I find I didn't need it to run that long. You'll just have to look at your nitrates and phosphates. When I did run it 24 seven, I didn't have any nitrates and phosphate, phosphates when I tested. They were bottomed out. And I do like to have a little bit of nitrates and phosphates within my tank. I think my corals grow better, especially the zoas when it's a little bit dirtier. So that's why I run it 12 hours. Okay, and that's really all there is to the refugium. Um, it's a great, easy refugium, uh, very budget friendly. You don't have to spend a tons of money on these refugiums. And um, a lot of people think you need a sump to have a refugium. You don't. I have one in my all in one tank, and it works great. One other thing I want to mention though, when getting. Um, refugium chato or whatever microalgae you want to use you can use whatever microalgae you want to use it doesn't have to just be chato but whenever you are picking that out the chato microalgae make sure it's clean so if you're getting it off of a buddy i would make sure this guy doesn't have anything you don't want to get because refugium is a great place for these things to live so i have feather duster worms that live in in this in this area, in this refugium area. So I guarantee if I had Aptasia or anything like that, it would live in here because there's no predators in here. Uh, it's got a light source. So make sure if you're getting Chato or whatever microalgae that it's clean. So one great place, great source to go is Algae Barn. They sell pest-free Chato. It is a little bit more expensive, but I'm telling you it's worth the expense. Uh, not to get some undesirables in your tank. Um, so that is one thing I'd highly recommend. If any, if you don't get much out of this video, at least get that. Make sure your chato is clean because it is a cesspool for pests if you get some dirty chato. Whatever pests you have in your tank, they're going to be in your fusion. All right, so that pretty much sums it up. Uh, reasons why I think you should have a refugium and how I built mine. If you have any questions, please leave it down in the comments. Um, I try to answer every question that gets thrown down there. Um, if you like the video, leaving a, a like and, and subscribing if you wanted to or a comment, that means the world to me. And I really appreciate all the love and support I've gotten so far. Um, so again, if you like this video, go ahead and throw a like down. And I appreciate you watching. Stay tuned for the next one.